Hello lovelies, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks, and I am going to show you how to make these beautiful pumpkins. Um, one of the subscribers on my channel asked me if I would um, do a tutorial on it, and I was happy to oblige, so here they are. Um, made on my Addy 46 needle machine, but you could follow the same thing on your Central 48 and it would it would be perfect. Um, I used uh, Your Inspirations Karen Colorama Ogo, in the color tabby for the two colored ones and it's a five weight bulky yarn um, and it takes a little patience in your machine but it does work um, just follow what i do and you'll have no problem um, i'm loving it i just think it just feels so it's just beautiful i can't even tell you the picture doesn't even look as nice as it actually is and the green one i give you instructions for that near the end of the video that's made with four weight yarn um, big twist in forest green um and of course uh because it's a four weight yarn i need to double it so we've done way more rows and we've closed it a little differently so i give you a very quick tutorial on how to do that um but if you can't get the yogo yarn or if you don't have any because i know it's off the shelves now and it's just what's left i guess um use it if you want it the same size as mine and the same thickness just use any five bulky weight yarn that you have um in the colors that you love and uh and let's just Go ahead and make these beautiful, beautiful pumpkins. So thanks for joining me, my friends. All right, friends. So I have taken my Ogos apart. <laughs> this is the leftovers from an, a ball that I start, used already. And <clears throat> we are going to make a pumpkin together. Now, this is bulky five-weight yarn, and it does take a little bit of patience. But you know what? Anything beautiful takes patience, right? <laughs> well, there's some things that doesn't take patience and it's beautiful too, but <laughs> we're going to use this bulky five weight Ogo yarn. Um, I know it's discontinued, so you probably can't get it, but you can use any, if you want your pumpkin to look like mine, use any bulky five weight yarn and just choose the colors of your choice. All right, so let's get the last white, the first black needle in line with our guide. And we're going to cast on Behind that first block, in front. Behind and in front, all the way around. This is about the thickest yarn that this machine has ever used <laughs> since I've been knitting. Um, and it is a bit of a challenge, but it's not so bad, okay? So it's in front of that last white one, into the yarn feeder, change our row, oops, counter to zero. We are going to knit in rows of 10. I'm going to change colors. Pardon me, did I say 10? I meant 12. <laughs> we're going to change colors every 12 rows and we're going to do 48 rows. But if you want to just do one color or you want to do two colors, however you do it, with this five weight yarn, we are going to do tw um, 48 rows in total. So I'm going to do 12 and we're going to do a jogless join when we change. So stick with me, folks. I'm not putting any pressure or tension on this it's just slipping through my fingers but I find that if I go nice and slow and I don't put pressure on the yarn with tension then um, it's it's working a lot better okay make sure you have a good amount out of your ball so that you're um, you're not you, you don't have tension coming out of your ball and make your your handle angry because if it's really tight coming out of your ball, your ha your handle's gonna scream at you. Okay, <laughs> so so let's get keep going and watch as they go through past everyone here before the needle takes it down because you want to make sure that those those loops that are going over the red teeth that they actually go over the red teeth because with this thick, thick yarn sometimes they want to stay up and then you'll get a tuck stitch. Okay, it's not many rows, so you can watch every one. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take long and the final result is absolutely gorgeous okay so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna keep knitting just like this not so bad hey oh that one was gonna tuck so i noticed it and i caught it and i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna do 12 rows of this color and when i get 12 rows done i will see you back okay again 48 rows is not a lot so if you can go slower and help your machine out, it will thank you for it and you'll be pleased about your work in the end, okay? So keep going. I'll see you at the end of row 12. All right, so I'm at the end of row 12. I'm going to locate my scissors. <laughs> I'm going to cut off that end, open my yarn feeder, put this between the last white and the first block. I'm gonna do this as an alternating two color pumpkin. Um, you saw the one at the, at the beginning that had four colors in it. This one I'm gonna just do two, okay? So I'm going to put that in between the last white 
and the first block. Then I'm going to swing it behind that white needle, just like that. And that's how I'm going to get a jogless join. You will not see that I changed color. You will not see the place where it changed color, okay? Um, and then I'm going to knit that. And after three rows, I'm going to come back and tie that, and I'll show you how you tie it, okay? I don't want to make sure this isn't tight. That felt tight coming out of my ball. So I'm going to now knit till I have row 24 done. All right, so just finished row 24. I'm going to cut off that yarn tail, open my feeder, put it between the last white, the first black, and I am going to grab my first color again. We're going to put it in the yarn feeder. We're going to shut the latch. Then we're going to swing it back behind that first white needle, okay? And we're going to knit. I didn't do this in the last one because uh, it didn't need to and I forgot to tell you. When I do three or four rows, I push that down and I pull on this just to tighten up those stitches. But with this thick yarn, I, I'm finding that I don't really have to do that. Um, but for sake of keeping it consistent in all my videos, I should have showed you that. Okay, um, now also, when I, if you use a four weight yarn, you're going to double your amount of rows so that you can um, put one inside the other like you do a beanie um, so that you don't see your fiber fill through. Because this is so thick, you're not, you don't see the fiber fill through um, through this. So I only need to do one layer, which makes me very happy. So we're going to keep knitting now. Oops. I'm going to do this. See, it's always my fault when that happens because I'm talking to you. It's your fault. <laughs> I'm talking to you and I don't take the slack out of my ball and then my handle fights me so it just reminds me okay so it's it's not the machine it's the operator okay <laughs> so we're gonna do 12 rows of this color until we get to row 36 and then when I get row 36 done I'm gonna put this off white one back in um, and I'm going to do another 12 rows and till I get to row 48 and when I get to that point I will be right back with you friends and we will we will cast off okay all right, so that's 48 rows done. We're going to cut off a long tail. We are going to open the latch, take it out, put it between the last white, the first black, because we still have to work this needle. So you gotta make sure that that's where it goes. We're gonna put our needle onto our yarn end. We're gonna cast off, okay? Turn your handle. I took a really long piece um, because I'm going to use it for sewing up the uh, sides of the pumpkin. Okay. Okay, and you're going to keep going around until you get them all off. Okay. Pull it through. and continue on. All right, friends, I'll see you when you get to the end. All right, my friends, so now we're going to make the stem. So we're going to take our green yarn of choice. This is a four weight green yarn. And we're going to, while, we're, while our white needles are in front of the yarn feeder, we're gonna put our latch up to um, panel mode. We're gonna go back as far as we can, which stops at that first white needle. Then we're gonna take it back. We're gonna go behind that first white in front, behind, and in front for nine needles. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When we've done the ninth needle, we're gonna go underneath that divider into the feeder, okay? Now we're going to use an Addy stopper. I'm gonna show you halfway through with an Addy stopper and then halfway through, I'm gonna take it off and show you if you don't have a stopper and you're using a Centro, how, how you go, how far you go um, before you turn back, okay? But with the stopper, this is the one we went under. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna click that on there. Then um, we want to do 20 rows, okay? So I'm going to take that until the stopper stops me. And then I'm gonna go back. And you'll see that this is the divider before that first needle picks it up. You're going to put some tension on your yarn so it's tight fairly tight. Let that needle pick it up, then loosen your tension. This is row one. We're going to go till we can't go anymore. It stops at that white needle. Then you see how I'm putting tension on there? Put tension on it as it goes over this red divider. That needle picks it up. Make sure the yarn doesn't split. This is two. Always make sure that that red loop or that loop goes down over the red teeth. We're coming back. Picked it up. 
and keep going just like this. So that's one, two, this is three. <laughs> okay. And four. We're going to stop there. Put some tension on it as it goes over the red divider. This is five. Make sure that goes down over the red teeth. Tension. Six. Tension. Seven. It's not hard. And tension. Then release the tension as soon as that white needle picks it up. Okay. We're going to go back for eight, row eight. I'm going to take off this stopper because this is how, if you don't have, if you're using a center or you don't have stoppers, this is how you do it. Your last working needle is going to pick it up. You're going to watch as it goes over that divider and this needle takes it down. And when that needle grabs it, it's going to release it again. But when it grabs it, then you can go back the other way, put some tension on it. First needle picked it up. We're good. Okay, loosen it out of the back of my ball. Go back the other way. This ninth needle picks it up. It drops down over the divider. That needle takes it down. Then you can go back. Okay, and I have to stop and count my rows because I lost count. So I will see you back in a second. Okay, so this is row 19. I'm gonna do one more. I had to do it off camera because I couldn't talk to you and remember my row. <laughs> so this is 20. Okay, let that needle work it. Then you're going to cut a tail. So cut about a foot, that should be enough. Don't need that much, okay? Foot's probably too much, but it's better to have more than not enough, okay? And then we're going to grab our needle. Once we get our needle threaded, we're going to just rotate the barrel back the other way um, so that all those needles drop down and all those stitches are um, ready to be taken off. So then I'm going to just take one at a time. You have to think backwards because we're used to doing it in the other direction. But I wanted, I don't count my cast on row and I only wanted 20 rows. So this is how we're taking it off. Okay. Pick them all off. And there you've got your little piece. We've got it off the machine. I removed, I moved my machine, um, got it out of the way so we can start our assembly, but we're going to put this aside, but also grab yourself a pipe cleaner. Um, I have green ones, so I'm going to grab a green one, but it really doesn't matter what color you use. Um, just as long as it's not so bright that, that you see it through the little holes there. Green is the best, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. And, uh, you're going to just need one of those. Um, little fun fact, <laughs> we call them pipe cleaners like you know, because that's what they are. And uh, and I thought, I, I, I looked, Googled it and I said, what the world was a pipe cleaner actually used for? Was it really used for a pipe? And yes, it was. <laughs> it was used to clean the moisture out of a man's pipe, a smoking pipe, um, back in the day. So uh, they just maintained their name. But some people, you can also call them a chenille stem, which I think is more pretty for crafters, isn't it? So grab yourself a green chenille stem <laughs> or whatever color you have. Put these two aside and grab your um, pumpkin. All right, I have my pumpkin. I'm gonna have a little sip of my coffee. Slurp, slurp, so good. Early morning coffee. I used, I drank my coffee black for many, many years, but now I've come, I just love those flavored coffee creamers. So French vanilla coffee today. So we're gonna take this and we're going to Stretch it out widthwise now. And again, I'm gonna just do it a little bit lengthwise. I love this yarn. Yes, it's a little bit difficult to work with, but it's so worth taking the time because it looks so beautiful. There we go. We're going to take this piece and we're going to smooth out the edge. And we're going to gently pull and smooth out and pull. Okay, we're going to leave a bit of an opening, okay? On that one, then you're gonna to go to the other side, you're gonna do the same thing. Okay, I already started pulling that one. We're gonna pull that tight. Then you're gonna take your needle, put it on your 
put your yarn on there and then we're going to go around and we're going to reinforce this one side closed doesn't matter which side you start with okay so we're going to go under that first layer we're going to pull that first row not the first layer the first row it's kind of hard to get under because it is thick and it fights back a little bit but you know what that's okay we always win <laughs> and we're going to just pick up those stitches you only have to go once around once because this is not going to break okay just to get it nice and closed this is not a toy for kids to play with and even if it were this yarn is too thick and 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 uh it is not it's not going to break so going around once is enough Going around uh, more than once with kids' beanies and, and um, ends of mitts and stuff and toys is a different story. But we're going to leave it at that, okay? Pull it tight. Then I'm going to just tie a little knot. Pick up a couple of these little strands. Tie a little knot. And this is a good time to put your, your, um, your glue gun on so that it gets nice and hot, okay? And then we're going to slip this inside that middle hole. And pull it through okay friends I'm gonna add this little clip because at the end of this video I told you I would give you the row counts etc for um, a pumpkin made with four weight yarn um, and as I'm working on it I realized that there's a better way to do this long end so when I told you I told you to bring that end through to this other side and then to stuff it but leave it out because when you stuff it then if you stick this through just like that it's going through the center of the stuffing. If I can get it through there. It's going through the center of the stuffing. And I think then when you pull it, it's going to be better because otherwise the, the yarn tail was along the outside of the, um, of the stuffing. So I think that just a little fine detail that if you put it in after you stuff it, it will be better, okay? So just thought I'd throw that little clip in there, okay? And once you get it through, you are going to make sure it stays outside. You don't wanna stuff it with your fiber fill, okay? And you're gonna grab your fiber fill and you're gonna begin stuffing, okay? I'm gonna have a little slurp on my coffee. Okay. How many of you drink coffee when you're crafting? <laughs> I generally have a cup sitting there. And we're going to just keep filling that until it's a nice, even fill. Okay. So grab it and stretch it apart. I always think that it goes farther if I do that. I don't know. I could be totally wrong, but... How many of you pull your fiber apart before you stuff your project? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm not needing to do it. I don't know. <laughs> I've always done it. Okay. And so we're going to fill it till it's pretty full. I'm going to pull on this a little bit to see where I'm at. Okay. If I was to close that like that, would it be full enough? A little bit more. Okay. Not much more. I don't want my rows to start separating where you can see the fiber fill, okay? If you're filling it so much that this starts to separate like that, you got way too much in there, okay? But it's nice and it's kind of plump and it's firm. Now what I'm going to do is just close this up a little bit more, just like this. And then I'm going to push down on it, push those two together just to see if I think it's right. I think that's perfect. So it's, it's firm, but it's not overstuffed, okay? So what I'm going to do now is the tricky part because you have to tie well first of all no it's not the tricky part yet we have to close this end off first okay so you're going to put your needle back on your yarn end do not cut this yarn end shorter because again we're going to be using it to um, do our lines over our pumpkin but you're going to go around just like we did the other side and you're going to reinforce this until it's closed okay so Pick up a couple of stitches of the very top row of stitches. Pull it through and pull. And that helps you to close it. Keep that outside. Okay. Pick up 
a couple more and close and go all around until you have that piece closed um, that end closed and then I'll see you back all right my friends so this part is probably going to be the part where you find the hardest <laughs> seriously I need three hands for this part um and uh yeah if you have somebody in your home right now who can come help you call them it'll only take like a second but we need to push these two pieces together and tie them okay and it it's harder than it looks but push it down pull up on that inside one I don't want to snap it that's the thing I'm going to just do a little tie here with this big long thing that's going to get knotted there we go and I'm going to do I don't know what that didn't make any difference but I'm going to just tie that off now I'm going to grab my longest needle that I have which is my centro needle look how long that is and I'm going to take this longest one and I'm going to poke it back down into there and into the middle if I can get it down the centro needles are really flimsy so I might have to grab my wool needle actually oh that's close enough I'm going to bring that up like that and through that's actually perfect because now I'm going to go down into that center um, again because I'm going to just reinforce this and then come up. Here's where some of you are saying, Shelly, there's an easier way, but I don't know what that easier way is. So I'm going to just do it this way <laughs> and feel free to tell me in the comments because I would be happy to know an easier way. Okay. And then now I can, I have a little bit more strength on that and I'm pulling it up. Okay, now I'm going to tie this again with this white one. See, this is like I said, where you need a third hand because then they can hold that down. And I won the battle. Yay. That, <laughs> that's really all I wanted to do. And I'm going to tie a third knot. Doesn't matter if there's a little hole there because um, my stem is going to go in there. Depends what side you want to put the stem on. Okay, okay, okay. Patience, patience. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get that out of there because it was so long I'm going to tie it with the white one that makes more sense okay all right so now I can take this this white one because we are done with you thanks for sticking with me through all the little uh difficult times too like it's not always easy to craft is it sometimes there's hard parts and uh and I want to be real with you I don't want to just go off camera and hide the hard part and and uh Make it look like I'm, you know, perfect at everything I do because we all know I'm not. <laughs> so we're all real people and we all just want to be, you know, I want you to see the things I struggle with too. So now we're going to take our yarn end. We're going to grab a better needle and this to me, this wool one with this metal is not bendable like this one. This one's just was... I don't use it hardly ever actually, um, but I need a longer one. And so I'm going to thread that. Now there is a method to this next part. We have 46 stitches around here. We want five sections. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the first one. So we're going to trail this down in the middle of a row, just like that. So pick the middle of a row. Remember, I always tell you details is everything if you have this going sideways like this it looks terrible so find a row go in the middle of that row follow it all the way down go into the point out the top okay I'm staying on that row and then I'm gonna pull it just like that now, because I have 46 rows, if I want to evenly space these, I'm going to count nine rows. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to have my yarn end come down that ninth row, just like that. Evenly between that row, I'm going to go back down into the, into the middle. Hold this in place so that you don't lose its positioning. Come back up. I, f I find this part fun actually. I like detail work. And then we're gonna pull. 
Okay. And so we've got our first little pumpkin piece there. Now we're going to count nine row, nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we're going to feed that. Where was nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to feed that down that row. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do this five times. The last row will only have eight, but that's okay. Okay, up through the center. And the last one will have 10, not, not eight. So nine times four is 36 plus 10 is 46. Okay, so look at that. It's perfect because they're the right the right size they're the same okay so we're gonna do the same thing one make sure that you're not counting like this one two three this is a row this is a row three four five six seven eight nine so i'm going to feed that down row nine just like that hopefully i'm not going to run out of yarn here pull on it then stick it down in there and you're going to do that until you get five of these pieces, okay? So we've got nine, 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 and then there will be ten left here, but no one's going to ever notice that, okay? So keep going till you have that done, and I'll see you back, my friends. All right, so that's done. Now I can cut this off a little bit shorter to work with, okay? And I just broke my stand that holds my phone so that I can record. So I need to go and order a new one of those. I mean, I've got it propped up here, and it's working fine, but... <laughs> but I'll need another one. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to just pick up a strand there. I had to add a piece because mine was too short. So I grabbed this one. It's a little bit different color, but that's okay. One of these strands is different, but you can't even tell. Okay. And I'm going to take this and put it on my larger needle again. And I'm going to hide it. Everything is so tight now, which is great. Okay. Put it in there. Pull it out. Cut it off. And it's looking great. This one is one with a 10. It's a little bit bigger. But you know what? Actually, what I like about that is that it makes it sit on its side a little bit. But you can you can play with the stuffing that's in there and rope, move it over just a little bit and make it. I already did it. See, I just did that base just a little bit and it's already flat. It's all in, in how you hand manipulate it, okay? So now you're going to grab your stem. Here it is. This is a quick part, okay? Doesn't take long at all. Let's take our short end here and let's pull it tight. Grab your needle. Okay? And we are going to mattress stitch this close. But before we do that, let's pull this end tight. We're going we're gonna to just hide the shorter end because we're going to use a long end to match our stitch. But you're going to take your pipe cleaner and you're going to measure the length of this. So to there, okay? I'm going to fold this in half or fold it right where, where the length is, okay? And then fold this again over top just like that. And then I'm just going to twist this just so that that end is covered. I'm going to twist it right where that end is too, okay? Um, just like that. And then we're going to stick it in here. Just like so. And I'm just going to reinforce this little end right here. Just like so. And then I'm going to hide this yarn end just inside. Okay, cut it off. Throw that out. Turn it around. And we don't need it this long either. And we're going to mattress stitch this closed. Okay, so to do that, we are going to just fold it like this. Let me just zoom in here for you. Okay, just like that. Okay, and we're going to find our two rows where the wide part of the stitch goes to the left. The point of the V is to the right. Okay, 
I can go up to this furthest row here, okay? And it doesn't have to be the first two rows. I'm going to actually choose this second one over there. Just so this wraps tighter around the around the pipe cleaner. But I always find it easier if my wide part of the V is facing, the, is going to the left, okay? So let's just pick up a couple and start here. Go up to the top, pick up two bars, pull it through. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to do it up here. Pull it through. And then we're just going to continue that on down the line. This is where it came out. I'm going to pick up two right there. This is where it came out. So I'm going to go in, pick up two. Pick up two. Pick up two. And you stick with me in this video because this is this is five weight yarn. I'm going to um, show you at the end of this video one that I did with four weight yarn and give you the row counts for that, okay? Um, and show you how I, just a very brief um, showing of how I'm going to assemble that one because we will do it double the rows so that we can um, have a double thickness. Four weight yarn, you need a double thickness so you don't see your fiber fail through. So stick with me um, after I do this. And after we put this on, because we're almost done, and I'm going to give you a quick run through of doing the same thing with four weight yarn. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to just pull this closed before I continue any farther. I'm going to pinch the top there and just close it just like that. Okay. And then we'll finish, we'll finish it down to the bottom here. All right, so finish it down to the bottom, then tie it off in a knot, and we will attach it to our pumpkin. Okay, all right, so I'm tying this off. I'm gonna hide that in my work. You're gonna grab your hot glue gun and your pumpkin, and we're gonna finish this little baby off. All right, here's my pumpkin. Glue gun in hand, what side do I want this little stem on? Do I want it on the brown side or do I want it on this side? You know what, because my other one is predominantly brown showing, I'm gonna put it on this side. So I'm going to take my glue gun. Maybe it's not hot enough, but let me just see if I can push that glue out because it's at the end of the last stick. And I'm gonna just fill that hole with a little bit of glue, just like that. Then I'm gonna take this little stem and I'm gonna poke it in there. And then you can just twist it however you like. And there we go. Isn't that just so, so beautiful? I absolutely love it. All right, so for the four weight one, you're going to cast on and you're going to knit 100 rows, okay? This is just with the worsted weight yarn. Then you're going to take one end and you're going to close it up like we did on the other one, okay? Reinforce around there and close it off with a knot just like that. Oops, pulled it too far too fast. Okay, I'm going to cut this off and make it a little shorter. This is the short end. The other one has a long, long, long end. Okay. And we're going to put our hand into our project. Put your needle through that hole, pull your yarn through, pinch the end and bring it through. Okay, just like so. Okay, you've got that out. Now you're gonna close off this one in the same manner. This one has a really long end because this is the one we're gonna use for um, sewing around the pumpkin when we have it stuffed. Okay, so now what you're going to do, I'm not going to stick with, I'm not going to redo the whole video again. So all I'm going to tell you to do is now you're going to take this and you're going to reinforce this one here um, so that you have, you have a tight seam there 
Okay, and when you do that, see me back. All right, so I've done that. I've tied these two off together, um, and now it looks like a campfire beanie. <laughs> but I'm going to grab my needle here. I'm gonna hide this shorter one in between the layers. Okay. Cut it off. And then I'm gonna show you here um, that I'm hiding this long one. I'm putting it inside and taking it out the other end. Do not do this. This is where I got wiser. <laughs> I made this video and then I got wiser and realized let's leave it out because then it's easier to, to tie later when we push it through the center of the stuffing. So do not do what I just did. Just leave that very long tail outside of your work. Now you're going to stuff this You're going to stuff this just like you, you did your other one, but you're also going to, when you're done that, you're going to, I'm gonna just quickly show you what you're gonna do. You're going to close up this end, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're going to pick up one row, just like that, bring it through, making sure you leave a tail there, getting that out of the way every time. You're gonna miss a row, pick up a row. Miss a row, pick up a row, all along the edge there, so that you have um, a cinch, a piece of cinch yarn there, so you can close this end, okay? So just like this. Miss a row, pick up a row, miss a row, pick up a row, all along the edge there, all the way around, okay? You see what I'm doing? Okay, so I have that all the way around, and this is just what I'm gonna use to close it at the bottom so that we can continue on the way um, I showed you in the last video. So that's as far as you need to see for this, okay? And so now you stuff it and you finish it with the way um, I did before. I made my little stem, okay? And uh, I'll attach that and then when I'm done, I'll see you back. Okay, so that's done. This is looking great. Um, and we are ready to just assemble our pumpkin like we did with the first one. Um, the only difference is, is that we left that long tail out because when you stuff it then if you stick this through just like that it's going through the center of the stuffing if I can get it through there it's going through the center of the stuffing and I think then when you pull it it's going to be better because otherwise the the yarn tail was along the outside of the um of the stuffing so I think that just a little fine detail that if you put it in after you stuff it it will be better okay so just thought I'd throw that little clip in there alrighty my friends there we go we have our pumpkins just by um, size this is this one was made with four weight yarn it's six inches across and it's uh, let me see I would say it's about four and a half tall this one made with the bulky is, let's get that right across, almost eight inches across and four and a half tall, okay? So that's where the difference is. But they're all so beautiful. Like this is one we made together, okay? That has the uh, two colors, okay? This is the one I made as a trial before I decided to make a video. <laughs> this is 12 rows of each color, four different colors. And then we've got the one here, okay? In forest green. Made from big twist yarn. I think that's what it's called from, yeah, from the States, okay? So there we go, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you make yourself some pumpkins. Show them in the groups. My group is Koala Knits and Knacks Facebook group. Um, if you haven't joined that already, please do so. Um, I'd love to have you a part of that group. Um, and if you're in other groups, make sure you show them there too so the pattern can get circulated. But here we go, my friends. It was a pleasure spending time with you. Please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And just have a really fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon.